Narcolepsy. What a concept. Narcolepsy, also known as hypnolepsy, is a chronic neurological disorder caused by the brain's inability to regulate sleep-wake cycles normally. Now, people with narcolepsy often experience disturbed nocturnal sleep and abnormal daytime sleep patterns, which often is confused with insomnia. Now, narcoleptics, when falling asleep, generally experience the REM stage of sleep within five minutes, while most people do not experience REM sleep until an hour or so later. Now, narcolepsy is a neurological sleep disorder. It is not caused by mental illness or psychological problems. It is most likely affected by a number of genetic mutations and abnormalities that affect specific biological factors in the brain, combined with an environmental trigger during the brain's development such as a virus. A physical exam and exhaustive medical history are essential for proper diagnosis of narcolepsy. However, none of the major symptoms are exclusive to narcolepsy. Several specialized tests, which can be performed in a sleep disorders clinic or sleep lab, usually are required before a diagnosis can be established. Two tests that are considered essential when confirming a diagnosis of narcolepsy are the polysomnogram and the multiple sleep latency test. Polysomnography is a sleep, sleep study. A sleep study monitors you as you sleep or try to sleep. The multi, multiple sleep latency test tests for excessive daytime sleepiness by measuring how quickly you fall asleep and acquire quiet environment during the day. The symptoms of narcolepsy are excessive daytime sleepiness. Now in general, EDS interferes with normal activities on a daily basis, whether or not a person with narcolepsy has sufficient sleep at night. People with EDS report mental cloudiness, a lack of energy and concentration, memory lapses and depressed mood and or extreme exhaustion. Now, the next system is cataplexy. This system consists of a sudden loss of muscle tone that leads to feelings of weakness and loss of voluntary muscle control. It can cause symptoms ranging from slurred speech to total body collapse, depending on the muscles involved and is often triggered by intense emotions such as surprise, laughter, or anger. The next one is hallucinations. Now usually these delusional experiences are vivid and frequently frightening. The content is primarily visual, but any of the other senses can be involved. These are called hypnagogic hallucinations when accompanying sleep onset in hypnoptic hallucinations when they occur during awakening. Now the final symptom is sleep paralysis. This system involves temporary inability to move or speak while falling asleep or waking up. These episodes are generally brief, lasting a few seconds to several minutes. After episodes end, people rapidly recover their full capacity to move and speak. So narcolepsy can have repercussions on almost every aspect of your life, including physical well-being and safety. See, most ordinary daily activities such as driving, working, cooking, walking, can become very dangerous if you fall asleep or lose muscle control unexpectedly. It can also have an effect on your mental health. Narcolepsy can disrupt your life to the extent that it may lead to depression and anxiety. It also may affect social and professional relationships. Unfortunately, sudden sleep episodes are often found humorous to those not familiar with narcolepsy. Some people may assume that you are lazy, rude, or even fake the sudden sleep episodes. It also can affect intimate relationships. Your personal relationships, especially spousal relationships, can often suffer as a result of narcolepsy. Extreme sleepiness may also cause low sex drive and impotence. It also affects memory and attention. Narcolepsy may cause you to have problems remembering things and concentrating, creating more disruption to your daily activities. Now, many people say that there are cures to narcolepsy. Well, although there's no cure yet exists for narcolepsy,
narcolepsy, a combination of treatments can help control your narcolepsy symptoms and enable you to enjoy many normal activities. The treatment that works best for you will vary according to your specific narcolepsy symptoms, but will likely include a combination of counseling, medication, and lifestyle changes. Now, medication can be helpful in treating the major symptoms of narcolepsy, sleepiness and cataplexy. Commonly prescribed drugs for narcolepsy are stimulants, antidepressants, and sodium oxalate. All medications have side effects, so be sure to check out with your doctor first, even if your narcolepsy symptoms require the use of prescription medications. Experts recommend combining a drug regimen with lifestyle changes in counseling or therapy. Now, what many of my students will tell me back at Cal Berkeley is, hey, can I drive a car when I have narcolepsy without taking my medication? And I'll say, no, you, you can't drive a car, stupid. You'll, you'll crash and you'll die without taking the medication. You know what we do with narcolepsy? We, we crumble it up and we throw it in the trash. Get rid of it. Now, uh... I would like to toss it over to my esteemed colleague, uh, Yale professor of anatomy, Nick Heflin, who has an interview with Perez Rankin, who is a victim of this terrible disease, narcolepsy. So I'm here with Perez Rankin, and we're going we're gonna to ask him a few questions about him having narcolepsy. So Perez, thanks for joining us. What's it like living with narcolepsy? It has, it, it ha it has its ups and downs. like. Uh, times I would fall asleep in class a lot, well, but then it also comes like I have symptoms, like I have cataplexy, and I tend like where I tend to uh, like feel paralyzed for a certain amount of seconds, and that happens during sports. Like I play basketball, so when I'm shooting, I can feel it coming, and that's why most of the time I can't shoot a lot. So you do fall fall asleep a lot in class. Oh yeah, but it's like whenever I do, if the teacher wakes, because I have to tell all my teachers in order not to get in trouble. So whenever, I, whenever they tell me to wake up, I go get a drink of water, go splash water on my face or something, and then wakes me up. So you can play sports with narcolepsy? You know, it's just like, because it only only happens, like whenever I get cataplexy, it's like during emotions, and most of the time during sports, I'm not as active or I'm not laughing as hard, or like, I don't get nervous at all during sports, so. Are there certain things you cannot do? Well, I could, like, I can't, yeah, I like say, if we're in a dark room or something, we're just like sitting there talking, I can't stay awake. Like, really, you just fall asleep? Mm hmm So, can you get your driver's license? But, um, I take medicine for, like, my narcolepsy, mm -hmm. so I had to take three pills every morning, so I had to take, uh, I had to take these two for my narcolepsy, and then I had to take an antidepressant, mm -hmm. since I'm not, like, a depressed kid or yeah. nothing, so, and it, and it helps and gets me through the day, but now they have to up it for it in order for me to drive. And if you're in a dark room, uh, you, you tend to fall asleep pretty easily. Does, does that same concept apply to when you're driving at night? Probably because I, they said they tried to like, uh, they actually simulated it and they had me sit straight up and uh, they, if they say if the radio's not on, but if the radio's on, I'll be all right. Like, What's the worst thing about having narcolepsy? Like, uh, say if I'm like, I just get very tired easily. And, like, even like if I put my head down for like at least 30 seconds, I could be almost in like a sleeping stage, like a deep sleep. And that's where it really kills me. Uh, that's all the time we have today, folks. Thanks for joining me, Perez. It was a, it was a pleasure. Oh, yo, thanks for having me.